So this is the differential I'm going to be building. Uses Miata hubs and bearings and Miata axles and a Miata differential. It's a limited slip differential. Now the bearing carriers are off for Polaris Ranger 800. I'll have links to where you can get all these parts. Now there's two different styles of bearing. You're going to have to do this kind of bearing if you don't have a lathe. I'll show how to build this kind. And it has a seal up against the CV axle to hold the oil in. If you use this kind, you're going to have to use grease with it. You're going to have to fill this can right here full of grease. But I'll show you how to do both. That sprocket's going to be custom cut. You're going to custom cut it, and then once you get it, then you're going to slice it down the middle to make a split sprocket so you can fit it around this. Now I didn't design a brake for this up here because the buggy I was making it for, then I'm gonna be making my own hubs. I'm gonna add a still, and I'm gonna have my brakes down here because I want to have really good brakes. So the buggy I built this for doesn't have a brake up here. That's why I didn't design one up here. So you're gonna have to figure something out up here to build your own hubs. I just showed you that these fit. So you could probably figure out something up here like weld on a disc around right there on the end of this or something that holds a custom brake disc. So here's all your parts you're gonna need to build this differential. This is all the plate steel. Had sand cut sand cut these out. I'll have a link you can download these the 3D files to have them cut these out. So your bearings and your seal. These seals are just the stock seals that go to this differential. So it's just the same Miata and everything. This sprocket, you're gonna have to design one or because this is custom cut to fit the pattern of bolts on here. I have another video you can watch how to make sprockets like this super easy. And then we're gonna need these pipes. So you're gonna need a little bit of this, it's three inch by I think that's quarter inch wall and then this is four inch scheduled 10. I need a section of that as well. These bearings are for if you don't have a lathe or if you don't have access to one then you can use these. If you use these you're not gonna be able to have you're not gonna be able to use oil inside this you're probably gonna have to use grease because these seals won't work with these bearings but I wouldn't use these bearings on anything over 50 to 80 horse I don't think they're that tough but yeah I'll have links to where you can buy all this stuff in the description so first we're gonna start by building the oil can for this differential I'm gonna cut off a section of this pipe So to get the measurement for it, I set this plate right on there. And I'm going to measure the distance between this. So I'm getting about 3.6 inches. I might cut a little, little bit short because I can just fill it up with weld. I just don't want it to be too long. I'm gonna square this, make sure it's within. Now this chunk should just slide on there. It's a, basically a perfect fit right on there. I don't want this to be touching at all right there because I want it to be totally sitting on this, on that seat right there. I want to find anywhere it's touching and grind it a little bit. So that looks really good. I 
And then this ring, it's the thinner one. Slide down here to the bottom. Now I'm just gonna stick through a few bolts to hold this from moving at all. And now I'm just gonna weld these together. This down here, don't do any weld along that. I'm just gonna tack it. But it, if you don't have a TIG welder and you have to tack it with a MIG or something, then you're gonna wanna grind that off after you weld the other side because this sprocket's gonna sit over the top, tied up against that. So you don't want anything holding it up. If you have to weld it down there, you could bevel the edge of this to make it fit around the weld. So this is gonna be a thicker one. And this is the disc. I'm gonna sit on it. So when I welded this, it warped a little bit and bowed that in. Just the center piece, it bowed it in a little bit, so it kind of rocks a little bit. So I'm gonna hammer that back out a little bit. Now these are just these are just to hold the oil in, so this doesn't have anything to do with how centered this is and whatnot. That fits nice and snug on there now. Now this, we're just gonna weld it on this side, right around there. I'm not gonna use any filler. This doesn't have to be that top. This is just to hold oil in. So as long as that's just airtight, then your oil can't get out. Now we got these pieces done for the oil can, we're gonna need to work on the bearing carriers. Okay, so this is what our finished carrier is gonna look like. It has one side and it's turned down for this seal. And that seal just presses right in there. And then your bearing goes on the other side. Now for these, you're gonna have to have someone turn these down on a lathe. And if you can't, then you're gonna have to use these kind of bearings. So that uh, still goes in there like this, and then the stub axle is gonna go, is gonna butt up right against that sill. And you have to get this the right distance, far apart, 
So this seal lines up perfect with that flange on these stub axles. So what I got on this one is this, this is 3 8 thick, this plate is, and then the other two measurements I got on here, that's the length of pipe. And you want these bearings to be a press fit. You don't want them to be loose at all. Because you can't have a snap ring to hold these in. Because we don't have enough room on here. So we're going to cut two lengths of pipe. And those measurements out of our 3 inch quarter wall pipe. And then we'll weld them on these plates. Okay, so I got all these sanded. Now how I'm gonna line this is this is a hub. It fits perfect inside this. And this right here will fit in that. I'm gonna use that to align that so I can pack it. Okay, so you got all these welded up. Now we're gonna need to press the bearings in and these seals. It's only turned down far enough to make this fit in there and go flush on the top. Before we assemble this chunk, we're going to need to drill a hole in the side, do some type of cap for filling up with oil or grease. So if you're going to do grease and you you can just weld a chunk of metal right there around it and drill a hole through it and tap it for your grease zerk. But I'm gonna do oil, so I'm gonna do some kind of a bolt. So I'm probably gonna do it all the actually up on the side of this right here so it clears this, so the oil can pour in easier. We're gonna put the oil in. It lands right above this, so it'll right into the space, go into those holes. We're gonna need to put gasket maker or silicone or something around that and around this top piece right here. I'm just gonna use some red gasket maker. these little rings. Now these are gonna space the bearing away from this a little bit so it doesn't the bearing doesn't rub on this. Make sure your bolts are facing this way so you can take them off to put a sprocket on or something. Because if you press this on there with those with the bolts in the other way you might not be able to get them out. 
So make sure the nut's facing this way. Now we're just gonna press these on here. So I just took that seal out so I don't ruin it. So since these bearings will be super hard to remove and put back on, and that thing's in the way, so this sprocket, I didn't design it to be a split sprocket, but I'm gonna cut it in half so I can fit it on there. This is the dimensions for the, for the sprocket pattern on that. I'm gonna grind a little bit on this side just so I can tell, make sure I get the same, get the sides right so I don't get them mixed up. So these have a little snap ring on the end. Right up against that seal. This is the CV axle I'm gonna use. It's a 1996 to 2005 Miata CV axle. Originally, I was using the stub axle from a 1994-1995. They did them with stub axles, but they're they're all interchangeable. You can either use either of them. These ones are just a lot easier because they don't have the two pieces. So this is just going to be mounted to a chassis. I'm going to have an idler sprocket for my chain tension. I'm probably not going to use oil on this. I'm just gonna fill it up with grease. It seems like it'll stay in there better and it won't risk leaking out. If you don't wanna build these bearings, you can use these. I don't know how strong they are or anything, so I didn't use them. I just built my own. But you need a 40 millimeter bearing fit on there. So we have to get this on here. You can see our CV axle slides right in there. If you're not building one just like this, then hopefully you got a few ideas how to build one. <laughs> 